This video is section 6.7 of Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. We're going to talk about higher order roots. The first question is, uh, what are and how do you solve higher order roots? Well, for starters, we're not going to solve them. We're going to simplify them. But square roots are not the only kind of roots. We've done a lot with square roots in this chapter, but there are other kinds of roots. Um, if you look at these examples up close, you'll notice that there are little numbers here in the little edges of the square root symbol. Those little numbers are called an index. The index is telling you that we are not anymore looking for two factors that multiply together to make the radicand, but now we are looking for three or four or five. Um, the easiest way to do these kind of higher roots is to go ahead and use your tree to break these down into prime factors. When you break down the 125, you end up with 5 times 5 times 5. So what number has three factors that multiply to make 125? Well, that would be 5. The cubed root of 125 is 5. The fourth root of 81 is 3. The fifth root of 32 is 2. Because five twos multiply together make 32. I think we have some examples further on down the page. So the third root of 27, when we break 27 up using the tree, we end up with 3 times 3 times 3. So what number has three factors multiplied together to make 27? Well, that would be 3. So the cubed root of 27 is 3. The fourth root of 16. Well, if you use the tree on the 16, you end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So what number has four factors multiplied together to make 16? Well, that would be 2. The fourth root of 16 is 2. All right, now when we get to variables, maybe it, sometimes it's helpful to go back and review what we do with square roots. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of x to the sixth is x cubed. The square root of x to the eighth is x to the fourth. When we're finding the square roots of variables, we just divide the exponent by two because a square root is looking for two identical factors. Now when we go to a higher root, we're looking for a different number of factors. So in this question, we're looking for three identical factors. If I stretch out this x to the sixth, I can make groups of three. I'm looking for how many groups of three factors can I make? Well, there's two groups here. There's two groups of three. So each of those would be 1x, or x times x makes x squared. In other words, the shortcut is just divide your exponent by whatever the index is. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and this makes x squared. The index this time is 5, so we're going to divide these exponents by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 25 divided by 5 is 5. All right, this time they get a little bit more complicated on this page because they're, they're not perfect cubes, perfect roots. So we're going to take the 40. We're going to use a tree on it and see what kind of prime factors we get. All right, so... Instead of 40, we can write this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Those are the prime factors of 40. All right. Now, because the index is 3, we're looking for groups of 3 factors that match. So this is a group of 3 twos. Every group of 3 can come out. So the cubed root of 2 times 2 times 2 is 2, but this 5 has to stay in. So it's a similar idea to square roots. You're just now looking for more factors to group together. All right, we're looking for the fourth root of 80, and I'm going to use the tree on the 80. So 8 times 10, 
10 is 2 times 5, 8 is 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2. So I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 from the tree here, here, here. All right, my index is 4, so I'm looking for a group of 4, and that would be here. I have a 2 that can come out, but that 5 has to stay in. All right, so again, I have a 128 here I'm going to use the tree on. 128 is 2 times 64. 64 is 8 times 8. 4 times 2. 2 times 2. 4 times 2. 2 times 2. Um, and I'm going to circle them all here. It's a whole bunch of 2s, isn't it? How many 2s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 2s here. Now, this is a negative 128. To get a negative 128, a couple different things could happen. Um, but since we want all the factors to be the same, we're going to put negatives on all of these. If there, since there's seven of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, by putting a negative on each one, we will get a negative 128 when we multiply them together. So we have negative two, two, negative two, negative two, Seven of them, is that seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, one more. And then we still have our variables, x to the six, y to the five. All right, now I'm looking for groups of three. So I'm gonna pair these up in groups of three, just like that, and this negative two will stay under. So I've got, I've got a negative two and another negative 2 coming to the outside from this group and this group, and I have a negative 2 staying on the inside. So that's actually going to make positive 4 on the outside. All right, now what do I do with these variables? Remember, divide by the index. So x cubed, x to the 6 divided by 3 makes x squared with no leftovers. So that x squared is going to come to the outside. I'm writing this leftovers over here. All right, y to the fifth. 5 is not evenly divisible by 3, so we're going to have leftovers, but 3 will go into 5 one time. So one of those y's can come to the outside. But after you use up that, you have two y's left over. In other words, you're dividing 5 divided by 3. This exponent divided by the index. 5 divided by 3 is 1, so that 1 is this y on the outside. And then you have 2 left over, and that 2 is this 2 still left on the inside. So this turns out to be your final simplified <laughs> expression. All right, the fourth root... I can't erase that, so we'll just have to ignore it. The fourth root of negative 32. So when we do the tree on 32, we end up with a whole bunch of twos, five of them. And because this is a negative 32, we're going to have to put a negative on all those twos. So we're looking for the fourth root, and that would be negative twos. We're looking for a group of four. So there it is right there. That's going to put a negative two on the outside, and one of those negative twos has to stay on the inside. All right, the third root of 54. So let's do the tree on 54. 54 is 9 times 6. 9 is 3 times 3, and 6 is 2 times 3. So the third root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3, we have x to the 10, y to the 12. So we're looking for groups of 3, and there's our 3 right there. So that 3 can come to the outside, but the 2 
This 2 has to stay on the inside. Now, we're going to divide the exponents by 3. 10 divided by 3 is 3. So we'll have an x cubed on the outside, but there's 1 left over because 3 times 3 is only 9, and that leaves you with 1 left over. You can write it out in long division if you want. Okay, this is the 3 that goes to the outside right here. This is the 1 left over on the inside right here. With the y's, 12 divided by 3. Well, 3 goes into 12 four times with no leftovers. So that will give us y to the fourth on the outside with no leftovers. So this is your final answer here. All right, we're looking for the cube root of 32 over 125. And don't forget with these fractions, it's okay to separate them into smaller fractions, smaller radicals for the numerator and the denominator. Um, the third root of 125, if you break down that 125 with a tree, you have 5 times 25, which is 5 times 5. And that's your three fives right there. So the third root of 125 is 5. <clears throat> the 32, on the other hand, breaks down to be five twos, just like that. You're only looking for a group of three. So we're going to have a two come to the outside, but we're going to have these two left on the inside. So that gives us two times the cubed root of 4, because I multiplied these two back together, over 5.